This is how a supermarket receipt solved this homicide case. 31 October 2024, police in Nairobi received a call that there was suspicious clothing at Langata Cemetery. When they arrived, they found a horrifying crime scene. There was a mutilated body. In fact, it was not just a body, it was bones, human bones. These bones were next to a plastic bag and female Islam clothing. The body could not be identified because it was just bones, there was no head, but it was clearly a homicide. By reason of the clothing at the crime scene, they assumed that this person was female. Detectives were quickly called to the crime scene and an investigation began to identify who this victim was and who could have killed them. In one of the pockets of the clothing, they found a supermarket receipt that had had a supermarket name, time of purchase, and payment method. The payment had been made through Mpesa, a mobile wallet, and it was linked to a cell phone number. By a stroke of luck, police clearly had their first lead. The police wasted no time. They proceeded to the supermarket to get more information regarding the owner of the receipt. When they got to the supermarket, they asked for CCTV footage from around the time that the receipt had been printed. They managed to identify a woman that was wearing identical clothes to those found at Langata Center. Because she was wearing a niqab, they could not identify her face through the CCTV footage, but there clearly was a link between this woman and the bones found at Langata Cemetery. They then managed to retrieve data from Vodacom regarding the owner of the number that was linked to the Mpesa account that this woman had used in the supermarket. They found that the Mpesa account was linked to a 26-year-old woman named Deka Abino Gorone. They also discovered that she had been reported missing at California Police Station on the 24th of October in 20. 24. They then contacted the family to tell them that they needed DNA samples to compare them to the bones so that they could prove if it was really Deka or not. During investigation, they also found out that she was in constant communication with a certain number that belonged to this man. They also managed to trace her movements after shopping on the 29th of October to Lovington Apartments. When they arrived there, they also found out that she had been captured by CCTV cameras entering the premises and going to a certain apartment. It was later established that this apartment was a BNB and they were staying together with Hashim. From viewing the CCTV footage, it was clear that she never managed to leave the apartment after the 29th of October. CCTV footage shows him leaving the apartment two days later holding two plastic bags which were later found at the cemetery. Police were given authority to search the apartment and they found out that the apartment had been recently painted, which means that the owner knew what had happened in the apartment but did not contact the police. They began a search for Hashim but he he was nowhere to be found. As the police were investigating this case, they made another shocking discovery. Hashim was also the main suspect in the murder of a mother, daughter, and niece just a few days before. The people he was accused of killing were Dahabo Saib, a 38-year-old wife, Musaiba Abdi Muhammad, her 12-year-old daughter, and Amin Abdi Rashid, her 22-year-old niece. This all started on the 21st of October 2024 at around 8 p.m. She had last spoken to her husband on this day sending him a voice message on WhatsApp telling him that she needed to go and get checked because she was suffering from a skin condition. Around 8 p.m., she then called a taxi in order to be ferried from her home to a mall where there was a medical center. After calling the taxi, she was then recorded on this CCTV footage standing on the pavement with her daughter waiting for her taxi. A Nissan Note is seen on this CCTV footage arriving and she crosses the road from where she was standing, enters the car and proceeds to the medical facility. Her daughter is seen getting back into the apartment and the car is seen driving off. A few hours later, she receives a call from her mother's phone from the taxi driver claiming that her mother had gotten really sick and he needed to come and pick her up and take her to the medical facility to see her mother. This is when her and Amina, her cousin, got downstairs and got into the taxi to go and see their mother. They are seen on this CCTV footage hesitating to enter the car, but eventually they did and this was the last time they were seen alive. Their bodies were later found the following days down at different locations. Amina was found with stab wounds dumped at Bahati Primary School. The 12-year-old daughter was also found dead at another location with signs of strangulation. The Dahaba was also found dead at another location with a slit throat and severed arms. She also had been raped. The police were sure that it was a shame because the Nissan Note was registered in his name. The vehicle was then found a few days later abandoned at an express yard in Nairobi. Cell phone records also proved that she had used his taxi 
taxi service a number of times in October. That her investigation into who Hashim was was even more shocking than they initially anticipated. They found that he was actually a fugitive running away from a murder conviction because he had killed one of his wives back in Ethiopia. He had been once a police officer and was now operating a taxi business in Nairobi. No one who knew him in Nairobi ever imagined that this person was capable of such heinous crimes. He managed to evade the police for two weeks, living in small rental places and using different numbers that they finally caught up with him. They arrested him and charged him with murder on the 4th of November 2024, that is last week. His application of bail was rejected because it was clear that he was at flight risk considering that he had run away from a murder conviction in Ethiopia. Since this is a recent case, Decker's DNA is still yet to be processed because they need to establish if the bones belong to her or not. There are no words in any language to describe what these women went through at the hands of this serial killer. They believe that the reason why they killed the niece and the daughter was because the daughter had seen her mother entering this car and could have been a witness against him. These two little girls were just collateral damage to him. As for Decker, it was clear that they were in a relationship because they were staying in this short stay B&B together but we don't know what could have triggered him to kill her. This homicide case is a stark reminder that criminal records should be made public. If his record was public he would not have been free to enter Kenya and conduct business with such a tainted past. May the souls of these four women rest in peace and we are praying for justice.